Hello everyone, this is Mike Ball, Maisie. I'm coming to you actually in August of 2011, having discovered the UCAT Catechism for Youth, and so impressed with it, I feel like I have to do something with it. I don't know if you teach. I certainly do. I've taught a good portion of my life now, and I teach ninth graders the Bible, and I've fallen head over heels in love with the youth catechism. You know, I just wanted to teach it uh, and perhaps go over it for people who are teaching the faith as well so we can have a discussion about it and how to present it and uh, the best of our ability uh, try to do it the justice uh, that it is. I find it to be an incredible book, uh, so well suited for Catholic school kids or youth in general that anybody can pick it up and read it and, uh, you know, when you think about the catechism, how orthodox it was and how much beauty and time and prayer and sacrifice was put into the catechism, and you look at this book, you can't help but see the same thing. It's really, truly a beautiful book, and uh, I think everybody should try to get as much of it to their kids as possible. So that's what I'm going to try to do by doing this presentation. So that's my introduction. I'm going to start with... Pope Benedict's forward, and uh, we'll take it from there. It's a long forward, but it's worth going into section by section. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this one particular video going into the whole thing, but I will just start it today. It starts off, dear young friends. So already the Pope is addressing children, young people, as his friends. And uh, what a beautiful concept that is, to think that the Pope is that close at heart that he wants to be our friend and recognizes the unity. Today I recommend for you reading an unusual book. It is unusual both because of its content and because of the way it came to be. I would like to tell you a little bit, excuse me, a little about how it was written, because then it will clear up why it is so unusual. You could say that it came to be from another work whose origins go back to the 1980s. It was a difficult time for the church and for society worldwide. New guidance was needed to find the path to the future. And after the Second Vatican Council, 62 to 65, and in a changed cultural situation, many people were confused about what Christians actually believed about what the church teaches, whether in fact she can teach anything at all, and how everything can find its place in a culture that had changed from its very foundations. It is still reasonable today, is it still reasonable today to be a believer? These were the questions that even good Christians were asking. Ah, here come my kids. Who's that? Shannon. Have a seat with Daddy. Shannon, I'm talking to people about the catechism. You're just getting up, huh? Yeah, you're tired? Yeah, give that a kiss. All right. Well, a couple of things here before I let my poor little girl do what she has to do. Um, we talk about the time and the history of the church. You can't help but feel a need for... You going to wave? <laughs> the time and the history of the church, you can't help but feel the need for compassion. It was a difficult time. It was difficult. Is that a white thing? A white thing? That's your barrette. No, not that way. Up top? I don't know. I have to ask the YouTube people what that is. No, not that. Up there? It that. tells you to type the camera. No, tells you the microphone. I mean, I mean that. Oh, that's the cursor. I'll move it. There you go. Like it? Okay. Anyway, it was a difficult time. Uh, I, of course, was catechized in the 60s. And I think about all the good, good people I had who had absolutely nothing to help them teach the faith. And all the things we have today, we have the Internet, we have uh, certainly YouTube, we have uh, far better uh, methods of catechizing the youth by way of books, if we get the right texts. And uh, it almost seems as if we're in a battle. In fact, it does seem as if we're in a battle for the faith to try to give young people the truth about Jesus and about their origin and their destiny, where they're headed. When I teach my girls, the kids I teach, uh, and I teach in an all-girls school, one of the things I try to convey to them about the beauty of the faith is um, the fact that it's accessible to everyone. Um, 
the fact that we need to be transparent. And I try to do that in my own self to try to convey things. I don't try to hold back anything or try to give them a, um, a redefined version of what the truth is. I just try to present it in a way that tries to get out of the way, if you, believe, if you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm sure many of you do too. Um, I have a lot of kids in my own family, um, nine, uh, most of them stepchildren. And of course, we have five adopted children as well. So, I mean, the way of communicating the faith, I think, is, is something that has to be addressed. You know, if you really don't believe it yourself, there's no way you can communicate it. I just read this morning um, about love has to be the formation for what we do and how we do things. That has to be the starting point. You know, nobody goes into Catholic education um, because they want to make a lot of money, right? You looking at yourself? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, it, I find it touching that Benedict is, uh, Pope Benedict is talking directly uh, to us, to the kids, uh, as if they are his, uh, you know, his his family. And that's really what we should think of our students as too. I think they, we should look at them as not only the hope for the future, but the hope for the present. And uh, I'll tell you what, that's all I wanted to say for this go round. We're going to come up tomorrow and try to do something else, picking up the third paragraph, and hopefully you'll stay with me. And this will be a journey we'll take together. God bless.